In this problem, we have a car that enters a highway at 30 miles per hour and uniformly accelerates to 60 miles per hour. We know that this acceleration takes, over, takes place over the course of 550 feet. And what we are asked to do is figure out what the acceleration of the car is and how much time it takes the car to go from 30 miles per hour to 60 miles per hour. So what we need to do first is we need to draw all of this information that we have or list out all the information that we have. And I'm going to start just by drawing the car in two places. So right here will be in my initial uh, information I have about the car. And then over here, I'll draw the car again. So this is when the car has moved. And this will be my final information that I have about the car. I'm also going to say anything going in this direction is positive. So I have a velocity. I have my initial velocity. My initial velocity is 30 miles per hour. And my final velocity right here is going to be 60 miles per hour. Because I have a change in velocity, I have an acceleration, and this is actually what I'm being asked to find. Uh, I don't know what this acceleration is, but I do know this acceleration is constant because it said it had some sort of uniform acceleration. And that will become important when we try to figure out how do we solve for acceleration. We also don't know the amount of time that this acceleration took place out of. So that's another, these are what we are trying to actually find uh, from this problem. The other piece of information that we have is, well, first we need to know we're dealing with particles right now. So we're going to treat this car like a particle. I'm just going to say that the middle of this car uh, is my zero position. So this is my zero position. That's where I start. So my initial X position is going to be zero feet. It doesn't matter if you use the middle of the car, the front of the car, the back of the car, uh, because as a particle, it has no dimension. So it's just, we could have just drawn a little circle and that would represent our car. But I'm going to just use the middle of the car and from the middle of the car, we know this car has moved 550 feet. So my final position, if I call my first position zero, my final position is 550 feet. There's a slight problem we have. It's not a big problem, but we have miles per hour and we have feet. And those are not the same units. So what we need to do is convert this miles per hour. Uh, we need to convert it to feet per second, which is just a customary unit that we use. So if I go my 30 miles per hour and I convert this to feet per second, I know that one mile is going to have 5,280 feet. I also know that one hour is going to have 3,600 feet seconds. So I can multiply this across. And when I multiply this across, these units right here will cancel and I'll get feet per second. So let's do this multiplication. For this multiplication, bring up the calculator. I have 30 times 5,280 divided by 3,600. And I get that this is equal to 44 feet per second. So let's just write this here. This is 44 feet per second. Now I have 60 miles per hour. Well, I can just sort of double this. I know this is going to be 88 feet per second. I could do the exact same conversion if you're not convinced. Uh, 60 miles per hour times 5,280 feet over one mile and one hour over 3,600 seconds. So here we'd have 60 times 5,280 divided by 3,600 and we'll get 88. And we just knew this was 88 because this speed is double this speed. So our feet per second will just be double. Okay, so now we've we've figured out all of the information we have, we need to determine what our acceleration is. And to determine what our acceleration is, it really becomes important that we realize that we do have this constant acceleration. Because we have constant acceleration, we're allowed to use the kinematic equations of motion. Kinematic equations 
of motion and I'm just going to write them all out right here. So the first one that I always write first is my velocity, my final velocity is equal to my initial velocity plus acceleration times time. The second one is my final position is equal to my initial position plus my initial velocity times time plus one half times my acceleration times time squared. And my third is the final velocity squared is equal to my initial velocity squared plus two times my acceleration times my final position minus my initial position. And again, we are allowed to use these. These are valid because acceleration is constant or uniform. If my acceleration is not constant, I need to go back to the equations I have, uh, like acceleration is uh, dv dt, and I'm going to need to integrate some equations. But because it's constant, we can just immediately and go use these equations. What equation do we use? Well, we have to look at the information that we have. We have velocities, our initial and uh, final velocities, we have an initial and we have a final position, and we don't have acceleration or time. So because we don't have acceleration or time, both of these equations, one and two, rely on acceleration and time. So for this first part, we shouldn't be using them because we'll have two unknowns in one equation. If we use this equation right here, the only unknown that we'll have is the acceleration. So we wanna pick that equation because we'll only have one unknown. So let's do that. So for part A, uh, my final velocity squared is my initial velocity squared plus two times my acceleration times my final position minus my initial position. My final velocity is 88 squared, which is equal to my initial velocity plus two times acceleration times my final position, which is this 550 minus my initial position, which is zero. So now I can just solve for what A is. I can get A, oh, A is gonna be equal to 88 squared minus 44 squared divided by two times this 550. And that's gonna get me A by itself. Oops, uh, I got to be careful with those parentheses. That's 88, 88 squared minus 44 squared divided by 2 times 550. And my acceleration should be 5.28. So my acceleration is 5.28 feet per second squared. So this is the answer right here to part A. Now part B. With part B, we are trying to determine the time it takes to go from this 30 miles per hour to 60 miles per hour. Now we also have this extra term now of A. Uh, we know our acceleration. So A right here is this 5.28 feet per second squared. So now we can go back and again, look at these kinematic equations and we can pick out the easiest ones. Well, since we're trying to figure out what time is, we're not going to want to use this because this equation doesn't rely on time. We're going to want to use either equation one or equation two. Now, we know everything in equation one except for time. We know everything in equation two except for time. However, in my opinion, equation two is tougher to use because of this squared terms. So we're going to have to solve a quadratic formula. Since I don't really want to solve a quadratic formula, I'll want to use equation one. So my final velocity is equal to my initial velocity plus my acceleration times time. My final velocity is 88. My initial velocity is uh, 44. My acceleration is this 5.28. And I'm solving for what time is. So if I do this, I have 88 minus 44. And then this is going to be divided by 5.28. And I get my time this time right here is equal to 
three seconds.